Hello, my name is Samuel Weiskawi, and today I'll be presenting about the paper Building Phrases in Language Production, an MEG study of simple composition. I'd like to start by introducing the first author, Lena Pilkinen. She's a professor of psychology and linguistics at New York University, who does research in the field of neurolinguistics, the neuroscience of language. She uses MEG to answer questions like, what are the neural bases of syntax and semantics, effectively the grammar and meaning of language? And how does the brain handle phrases uh, when people produce phrases and when they comprehend them? This particular study has to do with adjective noun phrase production. Now to better vote, motivate this study, I'd like to talk about some previous research in the field. Uh, past work in neurolinguistics has looked at single word production using electrophysiology, thereby getting a high temporal resolution, as well as phrase production using fMRI, uh, thereby getting high spatial resolution at the cost of temporal resolution. And in Dr. Pilkinen's lab, they have studied phrase comprehension using MEG, thereby using MEG to get some high spatial resolution as well as temporal resolution. But looking at this past work, there's something notably missing. That is high temporal resolution research looking at phrase production. And that's exactly the gap that this study tries to fill by looking at phrase production using MEG. So that's one benefit of using MEG. It has higher temporal resolution than a technique like fMRI, but it has others. For example, MEG is less susceptible to media pre medial prefrontal region artifacts than fMRI is. This is important in this study because it looks at the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. Additionally, MEG is not as susceptible to motion artifacts as electrophysiology is. And this is important in something like language production because it inherently involves movement. And as you can see in this figure taken from this study, recordings were taken from the ventromedial prefrontal cortex at a high temporal resolution of milliseconds, showing that MEG has benefits in this situation. That said, there are certain considerations and shortcomings of MEG that we must acknowledge. For one, uh, blink artifacts can still have a huge effect on the data quality. For example, in this study's first experiment, around half of the trials had to be thrown out for things like blink artifacts, showing that even though motion artifacts might be less significant in MEG than in other technologies, there are still issues with other artifacts. Additionally, pre-processing can have a major effect on the final results of the analyses. Depending on how the researchers process the raw data, the final result will change. For example, in the second part of the study, when the authors put a certain filter onto the data, they got one timescale for the activation, and when they removed it, they got a completely different one, as you can see in this chart of activity with the filter and without it. Uh, note the x and y axes have the same scales in both pictures. Uh, the authors had a few hypotheses going into this research. For one, they expected increased activity in the ventromedial prefrontal cortex and left anterior temporal lobe. This is based on past research shown on the right in their lab looking at comprehension of adjective noun phrases. The authors posited that adjective noun phrase production uses the same brain regions but in reverse order. So in comprehension, the left anterior temporal lobe is activated, then the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. The authors expected that in production, this would be reversed. Past research has also found a role of the left anterior frontal gyrus, so the authors considered that as well. So experiment one was getting at this idea of adjective noun phrases through three tasks. The production task asked participants in an MEG scanner to look at an image and name it with a color and object like red tree, green star. The control task involved listing two colors, red, blue, green, brown are some examples. This was meant to be another linguistic task that did not involve combining words into a phrase. And then a view task was included where subjects said yes or no to whether a color gradient was present on a picture to control for the different images used in the production and control task. And here are the results of region of interest analysis on the three regions mentioned before. And what the authors found was that in the phrase condition, the left anterior temporal lobe and ventromedial prefrontal cortex saw increased activity compared to the list condition. 
this effect was actually reversed in the left inferior frontal gyrus. Also important was the finding that the ventromedial prefrontal cortex saw activation increases before the left anterior temporal lobe, as expected. But the question remains, could these results be because the phrases have nouns in them, whereas the color lists just have adjectives? To make their findings more robust, the authors did a second experiment with three tasks. The first task was the same as the production task from experiment one. The second task involved naming an object on a screen using just a noun. And the third task involved naming an object's color. In this case, the authors expected uh, left anterior temporal lobe activity and ventromedial prefrontal cortex activity in the phrase production condition to be higher than in the other two conditions. And this is exactly what happened. Activity in both those regions was higher in the phrase condition than in the noun or adjective condition, showing that just producing a noun does not increase activity in either region. Uh, in this case, the authors found that uh, activity increases in both regions started around 200 milliseconds, which is not completely consistent with their finding before of earlier ventromedial prefrontal cortex activation. To sum up the results, the same brain regions are involved in phrase comprehension and production, as uh, shown on the right, with comprehension results on the top and production results on the bottom. However, the order of their activation is roughly re reversed, at least if you follow the results of experiment one. Additionally, the left inferior frontal gyrus is not involved in phrase production, but it might play a role in selecting uh, semantically related words that are in competition. This is why it might be more activated in the condition where subjects listed colors, which are semantically related words and therefore in competition. In conclusion, this research is important because it brings neurolinguistics closer to natural language production, going from single words to phrases, and because it's interdisciplinary, it combines linguistic theory with neuroscience methods. Future researchers might want to see if these findings are replicated in other languages because uh, there are diverse syntaxes and grammars and such. And they might want to look at other phrase types like prepositional phrases to see how the brain processes those. Thank you.